guys, welcome back to A Level Lessons. Uh, happy New Year to everyone. Uh, we're finally back again with a, another video for your geography series, and we'll be carrying on with all the rest of the videos as well. Uh, be it in econs, math, general paper, and what have you. Alright, so we're back with a new year. Uh, new content that will be coming to this channel, okay, as well as new subjects possibly as well. So stay tuned. Make sure to always subscribe and uh to be a part of you know everything that will be coming to you guys right so we're going to be starting this year fresh with resources for human geography covering thomas Malthus, uh a well-known um figure right in in the entire syllabus known for his ideas and his ideology on uh, resources and what it should be all right so who is thomas Malthus? so thomas Malthus was an economist he was a scholar who was heavily involved in the political economy. So we'll see why this was so later on. And uh, he basically studied a lot on the political economy as well as population. So he's heavily into the whole population growth ideas. And we will explore more about how he viewed population in relation to resources. All right, so Thomas Malthus is known for this thing called the Malthusian theory. So there's a theory that is commonly known by a lot of economists, a lot of uh, people who study this political uh, population growth theories. So the Malthusian theory basically is a principle of population attributed to the disjuncture between the geometric rate of population increase and the arithmetic rate of food supply. All right, so essentially what this theory stated was that an increase in population beyond the point where demand exceeds supply of food, for example, will result in a decline of living standards as well as an increase in the possibility of famine, disease, and war. So what Thomas Malthus was trying to state was that population will continue to grow, right? It will grow to a certain point, right, whereby it will clash with the amount of food supply that we have available to everyone. Right on this entire earth. So once it hits that point, it is trying to say that our living standards as well as our quality of life will start to decrease, right? For the sole reason that there is just simply not enough food to go around, right? And that this population is basically uh, raging in demand for a lot of resources. So the whole Malthusian theory revolves around this idea that one day we'll reach this point of uh, this, we call it a Malthusian catastrophe, whereby the population, as well as the supply of food, will clash, and from then on, um, population will just continue to grow, but there won't be enough resources to satisfy its needs. So, what are some of the checks that Thomas Malthus actually put in place, right? So, he introduced these things called checks to population growth. Essentially, checks to population growth are certain measures, certain... Uh, parameters that he wants to introduce so that we can limit this population increase so that we would not hit this Malthusian catastrophe as fast. All right, so the whole reason for introducing checks, be it negative or positive checks, is with the idea of trying to keep the population growth in check. All right, so trying to limit the rate at which, uh, at which the population of the entire world is growing. Right, so it aimed at limiting the population increase. So negative checks, right? Think of it as anything that is negative, right? So anything like uh, increased uh, abstinence, okay, increased mortality, okay, increased death, right? So negative checks mainly refer to things like abstinence that will lead to lower fertility rates. Positive checks is anything that increases mortality. So for example, your low living standards, low sanitation. So negative checks is more of a prevention, right? Positive checks is anything that um, is more of an adaptation sort of like strategy. Right? By positive checks looks at things that have already happened, okay? meaning to say that population has already grown. So let's put in some checks in order to reduce this population. So although it says positive checks, it does infer, I mean, it does connote a certain negative connotation. Okay, well, negative checks essentially is saying that we want to prevent it, right? So abstinence, right? It leads to lower fertility rates, which leads to lesser population. So think of it as like it's on a spectrum, whereby before we get to the point whereby population even arrives, we try and prevent the population from coming in. And if the population does come in, then we introduce these positive checks to reduce the population directly. Right? So he believed that with such checks, we will be able to maintain food supply, 
by keeping population growth in check. This is essentially what Thomas Malthus, uh, what the Malthusian theory essentially laid out in terms of its so-called strategies to try and curb this Malthusian catastrophe from occurring. So who is Thomas Malthus akin to? Right, A lot of us would know this character from your Marvel uh, Cinematic Universe, right? It's your greatest villain in Avengers, known as Thanos, right? So essentially, his idea was also that we need to introduce checks to keep our population in check, right? Essentially, whereby his idea was to wipe out half the universe, and to him, that would be the solution to essentially ensuring that everyone has access to enough resources and enough food supply. So Thanos actually adopts a large... Um, idea okay off of Thomas Malthus in fact if you look at the first Thomas and Thanos itself it sounds quite similar to begin with so this is this can be something that could possibly help you to remember how Malthus thought and what his thought process and what his Malthusian theory was all about so the benefits to the Malthusian theory was that it did shed some light on the fact that populations must be controlled to a certain extent Okay, however, it shouldn't be done through these evil strategies, these evil tactics that seeks to either reduce population growth okay, by preventing it or seeks to end any sort of population that has uh, uh, already arrived. Right, So there's also a need to ensure that food supply remains available to all and increasingly can be increased down the road Right, for future generations. We have to make sure that resources do not run out. So the limitations to the Malthusian theory are very simple. Based on what you have heard, you can already get a rough sensing that it's not exactly, say, very realistic, right? And it's very, very pessimistic, right? We Thomas Malthus looks at curbing population growth in such a pessimistic light, right? He wants to ensure that we introduce these checks that cut populations directly, right? But he doesn't actually suggest much of any other potential strategies that can be used to help the increase in food supply or look at this from a different angle instead. So here's a highly pessimistic outlook. And Malthus used potential growth figures and not the actual growth of population. Right? So he essentially used figures or data that looked at the future increase in the population growth instead of looking at current figures to determine whether in the future this point, this Malthusian catastrophe would actually uh, become a thing or not, right? So in, in in reality, certain economies, certain countries, which may be able to curb the rate of growth of population or that may be able to accelerate it, right, may actually prove figures of its future data to be different from what Malthus may have predicted instead. Right, so Malthus also never considered the advances in technology. So this technology that has become so advanced in today's society can actually aid in increasing the food supply, right? For example, you have GM crops, you have vertical farming. A lot of these strategies that we will later on learn, okay, Esther Boswap looks at this a lot, right, can actually help to increase the food supply to potentially match the rate of population growth, right? So the increase in population growth, right? Not only that, changing mindsets and perceptions today are also regarded right, as to contraception, family planning, and policies that has led to the stabilization of population growth. So you'll notice that in a lot of countries, they introduce education as a solution, as a strategy to ensuring that people are aware of uh, family planning, right? how many children they should have, when to stop. Right? In fact, there's a lot of policies as well in the past that have been introduced. For example, China's one-child policy, right, which actually helped significantly to reduce the rate of population growth by ensuring that each family only has one child, for example. So these are other strategies that governments have put in place. People have learned along the way as well through education on how they can curb the fast rate of population growth. So these are essentially the ways and areas right, that Thomas Malthus failed to actually acknowledge and he neglected and he did not actually consider these areas uh, which would help to ensure that food supply will never run out and to ensure that population growth will not go out of hand. So exam requirements for this entire topic is very simple. You just need to be able to explain the Malthusian theory along with its benefits and limitations of flaws, right? So we've gone through what both are. 
and you may be required to compare with other theorists such as David Harvey, Esther Bosrap in essay writing. So we will be covering these more uh, in the next few videos to come. So for now, just go and learn up what Malthusian theory is, who Thomas Malthus is, and what are the flaws in his theory that is not applicable to today's society. So that is all I have for this entire lecture. I think it's quite a fun little lecture that is just really talking about this population theory. So if you have any questions, you can leave it down in the comment section below. I will answer them as usual and do be sure to give this video a like as well as to subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. And if not, stay tuned for the next one. It will be out very soon. Uh, uploads will be coming back quite often this month and the months down the road as we get back into the exam season and studying season as well. Alright, so if not, I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one. Bye-bye.